What was I gonna say? No. I don't even remember. I'm so tired, I haven't slept. night I started reacting to stuff I was supposed to take off feeds for 24 hours but then what was I gonna say I don't have like D5 or anything I kind of react more to D5 too because I have a problem with the dextrose so I was supposed to take off feeds for 24 hours to get my pancreas to rest and then in that time, I'm supposed to run like double to triple the amount of fluids as normal. And I did all that. And last night, after I stopped my fluids, well, well last night, after I ran my Pepsi, like the pancreatic pain started getting worse. And then I did my steroids after that, and then that kind of like caused some more pain too. But then I was like swelling up so much, I had to stop the fluids since my hands and feet were getting swollen. My hands and feet are what swells before I go into anaphylaxis, before it goes to my throat and face. And I guess stopping the fluids triggered my mast cells or something too. So then I started feeling really reacting and like almost having to go to the hospital again. This morning with not doing feeds, so I didn't do my fluids like I was supposed to either. And I'm my eyes are just like really swollen and my hands I had to take my engagement ring off because it was cutting off my circulation so my mom and I are trying to all the little tricks to get rings off I did my steroid this morning and then I reacted to that so then I'm in a full-blown tremor fit and just shaking so I never restarted my fluids then either but I know now I need feeds and so we got my vitals to look a little better and I restarted feeds at a really low rate to get some glucose in me but I think my body's just really stressed out trying to maintain equilibrium between bordering on adrenal crisis and trying to with the pancreatitis and then not having nutrition on top of that to try to get my pancreas to rest I can't go as long without nutrition like I used to because I've already done this so many times that my body doesn't have enough reserve. So we don't know if we're gonna end up in the hospital before the day is out or if things will start improving as I go throughout the day. This is the sign that we have to put outside of the hospital room that Shiny is in. And it still doesn't stop everybody, but it's big enough. Hopefully it could be an eye catcher and they'll see. It's icy. <laughs> I think I got that on video. <laughs> we never went to go to the hospital yesterday. We were waiting until this morning. So I'm going to the oncology office to get labs and then they will send it over to the GI office and then we'll figure out what to do from there depending on the results. The pain is not really much better. It's not but good. I'm better mass cell wise, I'm not as swollen. We're just trying to figure out why I have pancreatitis. I have symptoms of chronic pancreatitis, but my numbers have not ever quite been this high. So we're they're trying to figure out what is going to cause this acute episode. And our theory after we emailed Dr. Afrin is that perhaps it has something to do with me reacting to my feeding tube and the duodenum because the duodenum connects to the pancreas. And so if I'm reacting to my tube passing through the duodenum, then but it can cause edema there, which will block the pancreatic duct. But he also said that it could be the feeds being placed in. It could also they be are like, they are deeper in the general. Yeah. So it could be because of my tube placement if it's not exact 
directly in the jejunum. Or it could even be if it is in the jejunum and I'm feeding the jejunum and somehow the feeds are backing up back up into the duodenum, then that could cause all the inflammation as well. So good news. My lipase levels have come back down to 80 something. It was 80 something, right? 82, I think. Yeah, like 82 or something like that. So at least we know the extra hydration and taking off of feeds for a few days or like a couple days is working. I have an MRI without contrast to look at the pancreas and it's normally done without contrast, which is also really, really good because that won't really, and me not being able to do contrast won't interfere with the results. And then my doctor comes back on the 8th and she'll take over from there. I'll just keep doing my extra hydration and hopefully. I know, her white piece levels are So, down. what was I going to say? I don't know. I think you should just do it on the way home. I can't remember what I was going to say. They keep walking in. And I'm getting my triglyceride levels checked before I leave to see if maybe that could impact the pancreatitis related issue. The problem is that the pain hasn't been much better when I'm doing feeds. I restarted them yesterday after taking 24 hours off at like 15 and then when I went up to 25 that's when the pain was worse. I haven't had feed since 1 a.m. now. My normal rate is 50. I'm just probably going to be losing quite a few pounds over the next couple weeks until we get this sorted. What was I going to say? No. I don't even remember. I'm so tired. I haven't slept. I reintroduced the feeds after the doctor said to withhold them. And that's when basically all heck broke loose. So we don't have a way for me to get nutrition since I'm not tolerating my Ella care anymore. And so I guess the goal here is to figure out what is going on and then determine what we need to do in terms of nutrition. My lipase level was normal still, despite being in so much pain. So we, that's kind of odd. I think it just has to do with all the extra hydration and because I had barely reintroduced feeds, I'm lucky if I got a couple hundred calories in the last few days. I'm just glad that the pain has subsided now that I've been off feeds for since 10 something. To do the MRI, I still can't be disconnected from the continuous Benadryl. So we had to get a 25 foot extension to put on this. Um, hmm. I've never been admitted on the regular floor at this hospital, so that'll be kind of new. That's always scary to be in a new place. So far, this ER experience is better. For here so long. Aside from, yeah, aside from waiting here for forever, but in Florida, in the Peds, if you went to the ER three times, at least two of those times, there would be a doctor that would come piss you off. But here, we've not really had any problems with actual doctors. I think that everyone's been more, much nicer it's than in Florida. Nice well, like the people in Florida, if you come here, like even going to like a Walmart or something, People are way nicer in this state than in Florida. You were the nice people in Florida. They were just very clicky at that hospital. Nurses, anyways. Well, I really liked our nurse. I liked you, all of them. You just, That's, <laughs> just be glad you put this to your two. I'll tell you that. It's probably because it's a bad date. Ugh. What does it taste like? Not I don't know. What You're is gonna it? End up in the hospital. Tell everyone what Ugh. it is. It has a horrible aftertaste. This well, Neo K Splash. Flavor. I mean, it wasn't bad when you were drinking it, but like as soon as you like stop drinking it and it gives you that aftertaste, it's like, no. Mm -mm. Do you want some? 
And it's expired to boot. It almost tastes like creamer. It almost tastes like creamer at first, then just like after the creamer taste goes away. Like I, like I told you, after you stop drinking it, it like completely tastes horrible. I guess I just drained the rest of it, huh? Yeah. I'll probably flush it. Because it's probably going to smell the same, so I'm going to flush it. Hopefully it doesn't make your sister's blood. How many days have we been with? I don't even know. What day did we come in? It was ambulance Wednesday. So we were So Thursday. Four so, days. Yeah. And we had three sleep plus an ER sleep. Okay. Yeah. We are going home. Are you excited? So I got admitted. Sean, and Sean's right there. There's Sean. <laughs> hey, babe. <laughs> whoop, whoop. And they did the MRCP, which is like an MRI of the pancreas, the gallbladder, and the liver. The GI doctor came back in and said that Luckily it looks Saturdays like is Sunday to me. Oh, is it Sunday? He said it looked like there could be a small kind of sort of maybe stone in the bile duct from the gallbladder, but it also could be just artifact from the scan. So he went and looked over the scans himself because he said he's old school and that's what he does. And now he agrees with what the radiologist report said that it's probably just artifact because my liver enzymes are not elevated and with a stone blocking the duct, usually the duct is dilated, which mine is not, and the liver enzymes are elevated, which mine also is not. So, he could go in and do an ERCP, which is an endoscopy that actually goes in and takes an ultrasound of the gallbladder and it can go through the bile ducts and it also checks out the pancreas because if there's a problem with the gallbladder, it can cause the pancreatitis bouts that I've been having. But they have to put you under twilight anesthesia for that. If that checks out clear, like he still thinks it's coming from all this, is still coming from my gallbladder, but it could be from gallbladder function, not necessarily a structural abnormality. And the only test to that checks a gallbladder function is the HIDA scan. And the HIDA scan, they inject like all these contrasts in you, like called CCK. And it's supposed to make the gallbladder contract like you're eating a fatty meal and it'll show the function. Now I already had one of those back when I was like 12 and I got so, 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 so sick. So that test out of all of them really scares me because it made me so sick, and this was before I was even ever having that cell reactions. So I got discharged today under the condition that I'll go to see my GI doctor tomorrow and I'll let her know my final decision about which, which procedure I'm going to undergo to find out the root of this problem because I can't keep living like this because it's very debilitating and I can hardly function. I was like MPO for days and I didn't get any more bouts of the pain attacks. So we thought that it was all correlated with two feedings. But then I woke up yesterday awesome. morning and I had two attacks back to back and they had not been really provoked shot. by two feeds. Yeah, so that kind of made us confused about our whole theory. So instead of going to full TPN like we were originally going to. I decided to try feeds one last time and it did initiate some of it but it hasn't gotten full blown but it's only a matter of time before the exhaust so it's only a matter of time before it gets back to how it was when I was originally admitted. It's the most important thing is that if I need my gallbladder removed that will require surgery. So right now I'm leaning more towards the ERCP. Yeah, but if it turns out that since they can go in and remove the stone if they get in there and find that it is truly a stone versus artifact. Alright, we're going to do some rigging stuff for you. So right now hey, I'm back Selena. on feeds uh -huh. and I almost just didn't get discharged because right as we were leaving the hospitalist went and looked back at my EKG and she 
install all my PVCs and VT on the Holter monitor, like on the ER, when I was in the ER, and even though that's not what we were in for, like they weren't gonna let me go. But luckily, they called my cardiologist, and I he's like, a lot. "Yeah, that's normal for her." Oh gosh. I think I'm reacting to the pillow that I laid on. But anyways, oh goodness. I'm at my follow-up appointment with GI and we're discussing the EUS and the ERCP and the Hyoscan. She's leaning more towards the EUS endoscopy too to figure out the source of the chronic pancreatitis. But there's one little hiccup my VT episodes that they would caught in the ER and that we know I have from my cardiologist are going to hinder the anesthesiologist because as soon as they go in and if they if I do happen to go into VT they're going to stop the procedure after they already exposed me to the sedatives and stuff to do it and so they want me cleared by an electrophysiologist first basically just saying it doesn't mean that my non-sustained VT can't turn sustained, but basically a whole liability deal. The whole gallbladder thing, we're kind of thinking that I'm having multiple issues going on rather than just one main issue. I feel that it's more of a bowel issue than anything. Man, this itches. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm reacting to that thing. All of this is just building up again. This could be my body's way of rejecting the feeds, but we need another form of nutrition while I'm finding a safe formula. And you can't just keep trying one formula after another without giving your body the break. So we're trying to figure out how to get me on TPN safely with the best chance of me tolerating it. I've been on TPN about nine times Sometimes it's been fabulous, and other times it's been a disaster. Yeah, I'm kind of with you. I felt better before the appointment than after. What? Um, tell me that this is your safe job. But overall, I really didn't want to go. But going at 4 in the morning is definitely like time to go to the ER when no one's there.